Hi friends and welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to read Chapter 8 of Misty of Chincoteague. Now for those of you have, that have not been following along so far, I encourage you to go back and listen to chapters 1 through 7. But for those of you are, that are waiting to find out what happens to the Phantom in Chapter 8, let's get started. Chapter 8 Caught in the Whirlpool On the shores of Chincoteague, the people pressed forward, their faces strained to stiffness as they watched Assateague Beach. Here they come! The cry broke out from every throat. Maureen wedged in between Grandpa and Bibi on one side and a volunteer fireman on the other, stood on her mount's back. Her arms paddled the air as if she were swimming and struggling with the wild ponies. Suddenly, a fisherman, looking through binoculars, began shouting in a hoarse voice, A newborn colt is feared to swim. It's knee-deep in water. It won't go any further. The crowd yelled their advice. What's the matter with the roundup men? Why don't they heft it in in deep water and let it swim all right? Why don't they hiss it on the scow? The fisherman was trying to get a better view. He was crawling out over the water on a wall of piling. It seemed a long time before he put his binoculars to his eyes again. The people waited breathlessly. A small boy began to cry. Shh, quieted his mother. Listen to the man with the four eyes. The colt's too little to swim, the fisherman bawled out. Wait, a wild pony is breaking out from the mob, swimming around the mob, escaping. An odd murmur stirred the crowds. Maureen dug her toes and her mounts back. She strained her eyes to see the fugitive, but all she could make out was a milling mass of dark blobs on the water. The fisherman leaned far out over the water. He made a megaphone of one hand. Then addle brained boatman can't stop the pony, his voice rasped. It's outsmarting them all. Maureen's mind raced back to other pony pennings. The phantom upsetting a boat. The phantom fleeing from the woods. Always escaping. Always free. She clutched the neck of her blouse. She felt gaspy, like a fish flapping about on dry land. Why was the man with the binoculars so slow? Why didn't he say, it's the phantom? Who else could it be? Now he was waving one arm wildly. He looked like a straw in the wind. He teetered. He lost his balance. He almost fell into the water in his excitement. It's the phantom, he screamed at last. I can see the white map on her shoulders. The people took up the cry, echoing it over and over. It's the phantom. She's escaped again. Maureen felt tears on her cheek and impatiently brushed them away. Again, the fisherman was waving for quiet. Hush, bellowed Grandpa Beebe. The people fell silent. They were like listeners around the microphone. It's the phantom's colt that won't swim, he called out in a voice so hoarse it cracked. The phantom got separated from a brand fur new colt. She's gone back to get it. The people whooped and hollered at the news. The phantom's got a colt, they sang. The phantom's got a colt. Again, the fisherman was waving for silence. She's reached her colt, he crowed. But the roundup men are closing in on her. They're making her shove the colt in the water. She's making it swim. Grandpa Beebe cupped his hands around his mouth. Can the little feller make it, he boomed. The crowd stilled, waiting for the hoarse voice. For long seconds, no answer came. The fisherman remained as fixed as the piling he stood on. Wave after wave of fear swept over Maureen. She felt as if she were drowning. And just when she could stand the silence no longer, the fishermen began reporting in short, nervous sentences. sentences. They're halfway across. Jumpin' Jupiter the colt. It's been sucked down in a whirlpool. I can't see it now. My soul and body, a boy jumped off the scow. He's swimming out to help the colt. The onlookers did not need the fishermen with the binoculars anymore. They could see for themselves a boy swimming against the current. 
a boy holding a colt's head above the swirling water. Maureen gulped great longfuls of air. It's Paul, she screamed. It's Paul. On all sides, the shouts went up. Why, it's Paul. Paul, baby! Grandpa leaped on his mount's back as nimbly as a boy. He stood with his arms upraised, his foot, fist clenched. God help ye, Paul! His words carried out over the water. You're almost home! Grandpa's voice was as strong as a tow rope. Paul was swimming steadily towards it, holding the small silver face of the colt above the water. He was almost there. He was there. Maureen slid down from her mount, clutching a handful of mane. You made it, Paul. You made it, she cried. The air was wild with whinnies and snorts as the ponies touched the hard sand, then scrambled up the shore, their wet bodies gleaming in the sun. Paul half carried the little colt up the steep bank, then suddenly it found its own legs. Shouts between triumph and relief escaped every throat as the little filly trotted up the bank. Almost to the top, her feet went scooting out from under her, and she was down on the sand heard sides heaving. Maureen felt a new stab of fear. If only the big ponies would not crush her, that tender white body among all those thrashing hooves. What chance had she? What chance with the wild wind for a mother? But all the wildness seemed to have ebbed out a phantom. She picked her four feet high, then she carefully straddled her colt and fenced in the small white body with her own slender legs. For a brief second, Paul and Maureen's eyes met above the crowds. It was as if they had, and the mare and her fold were the only creatures on the island. They were unaware of the great jostling and fighting as the stallions sorted out their own mares and colts. They were unaware of everything but a sharp ecstasy. Soon the phantom and her colt would belong to them, never to be sold. The Pied Piper wheeled around Paul. He peered at the dripping boy from under a matted for frolic. Then he trumpeted as if to say, This sopping creature is no mare of mine. And he pushed Paul out of the way while the crowds laughed hysterically. Dodging horses and people, Grandpa Beebe made his way over to Paul. Paul boy, he said, his voice unsteady. I swim the whole way with you. You're the most wonderful and the craziest youngin' in the world. Now get home right smart quick, he's added, trying to sound very stern. You're about done up and Grandma's expectin' you. Maureen and I'll see to it that the phantom and her colt reach the pony pens. And that is the end of chapter eight. Oh, this book just gets better and better with every chapter. Until next time, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.